In this video, we're going to cover some information about reading data. So first of all, data basics, types of variables. A variable are the characteristics being recorded or measured of your data. So you should think, what are the questions being asked? And specifically, what are the questions being asked of the cases that you're looking at? So are the cases or participants, participants being asked about their height or is the day being asked about what the temperature is outside? And now there are two types of variables, two main types. So they are numerical variables that deal with numbers often or quantitative measurements. And there are categorical variables. So these variables deal with categories or cases. So let's look into these two types of variables further. So again, numerical, often number data or data that consists of numbers often also called quantitative. So what are the types of numerical data? Well, there's two subtypes that so we won't get into too much in detail, but it's good to know about the two kind of subtypes of numerical data. And that is continuous, which is something that we can measure. Think like with a ruler, you can measure the length of something and you can always get a number in between. So we should think continuous as any possible measurement could be obtained in between two counting numbers. While discrete is counted numbers, like whole numbers, one, two, three, et cetera. So to make a little bit more sense of this, let's, let's uh, look at some examples. So measured data could be something like weight. So for example, weights could be 158.2 pounds or 191.3 pounds. We can think of continuous data as existing on a number line where any number on this number line could show up in our data. So then discrete or counted number counted variables, numerical variables are things like number of students. You can't have a half number of a student. So example could be like we could have 32 students or 28 students, etc. And we should think of numerical data or rather discrete data as only being able to occur in certain points, like one, two three, four, et cetera. All right, so now let's get into a little bit more uh, detail about categorical data. So there are also subtypes of categorical data. So first of all, regular categorical data. So this includes things like categories, yes or no questions, images, all of those fall under most categorical types of data or regular data. So I'll write some examples, so yes, no. So if you ask someone a question, do you smoke, yes or no, then the categories are yes or no, or smoking or not smoking. You could also, um, the description of the weather, cloudy, sunny. Here are some examples of regular categorical data. And then images, say you have little images to represent the weather. All of these uh, types of examples would be regular categorical data. We also have this notion of ordinal, categorical data, which can often be conflated or confused for numerical. Ordinal data has, uh, or is data that is ordered, <laughs> and maybe that's obvious from the word ordinal, but it's ordered. So you could say places that someone places in a race. So there's first, second, third, etc. Or it could be ratings, something like an A through F scale, or stars, maybe rankings of a TV show one to five stars. So the important thing about ordinal data is that it is ordered and it feels like it might have a sense of numerical uh, properties, but we don't take an average say of ordinal data. We wouldn't wanna say, well, what's the average rating or what's the 
you know, average place that someone placed in a race. So that's what makes ordinal categorical data different than numerical. And then we also have something called an identifier, which often isn't even considered a category or a numerical. It's just sort of a, a variable on its own, but it helps us to identify the data that we've collected. So the thing about identifier, uh, an identifier is that it's unique to each case. So it's unique to each item in your study. So that could include like someone's name, uh, email address, It could also include ID number. So you might collect this data when you're doing the study, uh, but it's unique uh, to each case. All right, so I use this word case. So let's define what that word means. So the cases of data are the respondents, the participants, the subjects, or experimental units that are being asked or measured. So essentially that's who or what is participating. So you could be looking at uh, the average number of hours worked for each state. Say what's a, you know, give all the states in the US, what's the average number of hours that someone works in Washington or Oregon or California? And so that you're kind of asking, you're not asking, you are asking the people for the information, but they're essentially coming to the conclusion of like, well, what's the average number of hours worked per state? So in that case, a case would be the state itself. And then the variable is the number of hours worked. And we're going to see some more examples of that. Uh, then the variables, again, are the characteristic or characteristics or measurements that are being recorded or measured. So you can think of that as what was reported. Now we often organize data in tables. And in this example, we see a data table and how to use it. So first I want you to just pause the video for yourself and take a look at this table. Try to make sense of what is being represented in each row and each column. So after you've done that, we can look at this example further. It says use the data below in this table to explore the ideas of cases and variables with survey results from 10 statistics students. So right away, we have 10 statistics students is our, what we're told. So these 10 statistics students would be the cases of our data, of our study. And so we can observe here that in this first row, it has a different nature than any other row that follows. This first row here just tells us about the titles of each column. So the first column is ID, second gender, next credits. And we see that in each column then we're representing a different variable. So in a table like this, the variables are being represented in the columns. Each column is a different variable, ID, gender, credits, et cetera. And then we see each row, well, there's information or variables collected about one person, right? ID number two, they are female, they have 12 credits, they are awarded the Academy Award, they have three siblings, et cetera. And so a case in a data table is often represented in a row. So now that we've seen a bit of information about this table, let's get into the questions. So first question says, what are the cases of the data? Well, we just saw that the cases are these 10 statistics students. Again, cases, another way of saying that are who is the data being collected on? Who or what is the data collected on? Who is the data collected on? Well, it's collected on the 10 statistics students. And put that in parentheses because it's more of a question that we should ask ourselves when determining the cases of data. 
Now, the next question is, what are the variables of the data? So in other words, what data is being collected? And maybe not data, I don't wanna reuse that word, but what information? Well, if we look back at our table, we see that there's a lot of data being collected. There's a lot of information being collected. We have ID, we have gender, we have credits, we have award, we have number of siblings, number of TV hours watched, school rating, I guess how they rank their school on one to five and their pulse. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different variables being collected. So let's go ahead and write those down. And feel free to flip back into uh, your previous page. But I have them here on a separate sheet. So I'll write them for us. So we are collecting ID. We are collecting gender. We are collecting credits. Number of credits that is. We are collecting awards. We are collecting number of SIBs. We are collecting number of TV hours watched. We are collecting their school rating. And we are collecting their pulse. So part C says, we'll describe each variable as categorical or numerical. So I want you to pause the video right now and try to answer this question for yourself. Look over each of these variables and then determine if that variable is categorical or numerical. Feel free to flip back to the table to help you out here. All right, and once you've had a moment to pause the video, let's look over it together. All right, so we'll notice that ID well, the ID number is not numerical, even though it just comes to us in a number, but it's more of an identification or an identifier of each case. So ID is categorical. And in particular, it's an identifier. Next up, gender. Well, gender is in this case, a category. Some students chose male, some students chose female. We could include other genders here. Uh, if we want as well, but there's discrete categories of gender. So this would also be a categorical variable. And we can ask what type of categorical variable? Is it an identifier? Is it ordered? Or is it just a regular category? And it's just a regular category. We don't uh, order genders in any way, and a gender is not going to define uh, one case from the other. All right, number of credits taken. Well, that's numerical. It's a measured number of credits, and that's a discrete variable because we don't have people taking 1.75 credits. Now, the award they get is, or they've signed up for, or whatever, is also a category. It would be a regular category. Number of siblings, what do we think? Awesome, numerical and discrete, continuous, discrete. Because we can't have a partial amount of sibling. TV hours, well, TV number of hours would be numerical. Now discrete, continuous, well, it depends here. Maybe you're only giving people the choice to answer in whole number hours, but you could also measure in parts of hours. I watched 1.7 hours of TV. School rating, well, this is a categorical. We're given a number in this rating, but the number is a, a ranking. So this would be an ordinal, an ordinal category. So the categories, though they are numerical, I'm giving the school a two or a three, uh, we don't treat them the same way as we would a measurement. It's an ordinal category. And then finally, pulse. Well, that's also numerical. And we consider it discrete. Because usually when we measure our beats per minute of our heartbeat, we just have whole numbers here. All right, so please go over and review any parts of this video um, to better uh, improve your understanding. And we'll meet up on the next one. Great work.